Welcome. I would like to talk today a little bit about discrete complex analysis. It's a theme I was thinking about for many years and uh, in 2013 I was once uh, giving a talk, a Pecha Kuchak talk, 20 times 20, 20 slides in 20 seconds. This was covering all single, single variable calculus, including the Taylor theorem. <clears throat> so in, in the discrete, one can also do complex analysis. And I would like to describe uh, an approach which is very simple and uh, the simplest I have seen, so this, it's, it's also an old theme, it has been uh, studied since Kirchhoff and uh, in the 40s there were several papers already and uh, more recently they really exploded in the context of statistical mechanics and scaling limits. So I'm not doing anything like that, everything is finite, so in principle everything I'm saying today is not involving any limits, everything is for an ultra-finitist acceptable, there is no infinity, and also the functions which we are uh, considering, they could be finite valued. The, the approach which I'm describing is very similar to the real part, it's a deformation approach. I like the idea that you look at the discrete with the eyes of the continuum and uh, so that everything looks the same. So it is a deformation approach. <coughs> So what we have is a commutative algebra of observables. What we do is we introduce a larger algebra and for that we need some operators. So first of all we have the discrete derivative. <coughs> so I'm not taking any h. We could do everything with h and some, some small h, like 10 to the minus 35, the Planck constant, but it doesn't matter because we are not interested in the limit. We keep that. We can take the unit as h equal to 1. And so that's kind of, that's then the discrete derivative. And then we have also an operator u f x, which is a unitary x minus one. It's just a translation. And now if we take the, the algebra of, of, of functions, this is a commutative algebra, and we can add to this, this uh, translation, we get the, uh, what one called a crossed product. So what we have is maybe c, z, and then we have the cross product with, uh, with z. <coughs> with a generated by u. This is sometimes called the cross product. You can do that with any algebra, C style algebra, phenomenal algebra or anything, but kind of just add this operator u also. And now we can deform the, the polynomials. <coughs> x, x, u to the n. That's what we call x to the n. We often then leave this bracket away, but just to make things clear, I keep this bracket first. So that's a deformed. And we have x. That's just x. So we have x squared. So that's x times x minus 1. This has been done in such a way, this has been deformed in such a way that the usual rules for derivatives still work. So what we have is dx to the n. So we don't have to change the textbooks, of course I would just write it down without the brackets and then we have the usual and the, the, the DF, so we can actually just write F prime if we don't want to, you know, <coughs> change the notation. Uh, we have also an integration which I should describe, so integral from 0 to x, F T D T. I just also call this SFx, that's just F zero plus f one plus f x minus one. So it's just a summation. So that's the Riemann sum with the spacing one and that's the that's what we call the integral. And then s uh, you can immediately check s of t f x is just f x minus f zero and uh, d s f and that's, of course, just a fundamental theorem of calculus. And uh, usually this is written like this, the integral from 0 to x. So this is the fundamental theorem of calculus. I've just changed the notation so that it looks like the usual thing. We have also the Taylor series, which actually has already been known by 
by Gregory. So what we have is for any function. So this is true. This is all true for any function. So f is a general form. <coughs> Just this can be in any any uh, ring. Doesn't even have to be the regals. So what we have is also the we have the Taylor series. So if we have f x plus t is sum k equal to so these are finite. So this is Taylor. This is a finite. These are finite sums. <coughs> You see, for any x, what happens is eventually, what happens is for any integer x, eventually you will hit, <laughs> you will hit zero. So the x to the if n is larger than x, x to the n is this bracket x to the n is equal to zero. So these are finite sums, and this you can just, you know, verify by induction. It's kind of interesting. For example, what you have is, oh, I should also introduce the exponential. <coughs> so what we also have is uh, we have the exponential function. Uh, and that's in this case just 2 to the x. So uh, this is actually just 1 plus 1 to the x. In general, it would be 1 plus h to the x. And this is done in such a way that we that's the derivative of the exponential function. And then, for example, for the Taylor, so this is uh, what I described in Petra Kucha. <coughs> In 20 times 20 seconds, I include much more things like uh, trigonometry. So what you have is, uh, so you just define uh, this. This has been like an and it's an rule here about the exponentiation. I described also a little bit of multivariable calculus on, on graphs in that Pecha Kucha talk. But essentially, that's what I wanted to say, because what we are going to do, and we want just to get as fast as possible to the Cauchy formula. So first of all, to keep things simple, I'm staying with a discrete lattice Z2. Let's just take this as Z shine product. So you have it here. So we take also connections like that. This gives a little bit of richer richer possibilities for paths. It doesn't really matter whether you take a triangulation or this, uh, this lattice. This makes the things simpler and it's essentially it's just like an open domain in, in the complex plane uh, model like this. So what we do is first of all we have uh, the discrete, we have to describe the discrete derivative. So what we take is d over dz. <coughs> Z. So it's like in the continuum. <coughs> So this is fx plus y. So these are integers. x and y are integers. And fx and fy are these discrete derivatives. So I didn't even bother with writing things down like here with a dx, dy, dz. So I'm just writing it as in the continuum so that we have exactly the same story. And then we have also the d over the so z bar. I put the star there because it's a little bit different. So the reason why we have to do that is that we will have the, the Laplacian. So that we can talk about the real and complex, the real and imaginary part. They actually will be harmonic functions then. So classically harmonic functions in the sense of graph theory. And if you don't, if you are an ultra affinitist, you would actually say the some domain and so on the boundary. We don't want to have, don't need to have that. Otherwise, it's not so interesting. So what happens on a finite graph, for example, is real and imaginary part will be harmonic functions on a com connected graph. They are constant. We can also deform, deform, we can deform the algebra again. So uh, it's a little bit very very similar than before. We have these translation operators, right? Uh, where we translate here in the x or in the real part backwards, or we translate backwards in the y direction. I call this u and v. So the deformation has been done in such a way that if we take the derivative with respect to z here and then we get the n times this 
we take the derivative with respect to y, we get i times this, and so this is just twice i times n times. So what we have is just d over dz. <coughs> So it's the same formula than we have in the real part. So this is this is done a little bit differently here, for example, in LOVAS. By the way, I was not looking at these sources uh, before kind of thinking about this myself. That's Otherwise, I would have probably been locked in into one of the frameworks described, described here. And then also what we want is to deform the... So we have the x, x. So that's just... Uh, so this is x x plus i y that's just minus one x. So also this is done in such a way that d over dz I did not say about the, the, the proof of the Taylor series can be done by induction but it can also be done using the transport equation and that's actually maybe the best way here so And the proof is also like before, so what we have is we just take the derivative, the, all these discrete derivatives, we take d, z. But also, also the solution e to the d, z, which is just what we have on the right hand side. And of course, this is the exponential function, which this is this deformed exponential function. So these are all discrete. And also the x of d z which is this which is actually just this part so that's the simplest way to note that this is these are finite finite sums again now we want also to have uh, the Cauchy theory like in the you know first weeks of a complex analysis course you learn this you learn these formulas and uh, we want to get to this and for that, we have to, to define a line integral. So these are also called contour integrals in the complex, in complex analysis. So here it's a very important point, and that's where we kind of deviate from, uh, from other sources, is that we want to assign to a zero form f. So these are zero forms. Analytic functions are zero form. So we cannot. We, can, we cannot get around this on a, on, on a graph to, to distinguish that. So it's, we are in a one-dimensional calculus setup. So, so this can be identified with one forms. But how do we do that here? A one form is a function on edges in graph theory. This is actually something on, this, these are oriented edges on functions on triangles, complete subgraphs with three vertices. These are uh, then uh, uh, two forms. And uh, we assign arbitrarily an orientation on each of the edges and each of the triangles, etc. In this case, it makes kind of sense to orient it like that, like usual. So orient it like that and orient it upwards, so that we have no, uh, we have the same kind of story than in the, in the in the in the continuum. But what what we cannot get around is to assign for a function value here. We have to assign functions values on edges, and there are much more edges than. Than vertices. So in the one-dimensional case, if you look at one-dimensional case, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence, right? So these are vertices, and this is an edge. So on, for every vertex, there is exactly one edge. So we can identify one forms with zero forms, and the integration which we have here, kind of this integration here, is actually a line integral. So it's very important <laughs> we don't make this uh, mix up because that's uh, that's in, in graph theory completely different on functions on edges and functions on and also here functions and so what LOAS for example LOAS just takes the, the average of the values <coughs> I might have done that too if I would have read uh, uh, LOAS but uh, I, I do it differently and actually what I'm doing has been done already by Isaacs in 1941 so what we do is we take the so we take the thing so this is z and then so these are edges and what we do is i just assign here the function value fz and assign here the function value i of z and then on this thing i assign. okay so we take this uh, one form and that's done in such a way that actually just the, the line integral which we have is so we have a f 
So we are assigned to F, we assign FDZ, which is a one four, <coughs> which is now a function on edges. And if you have a function on edges, we can do line integrals. So if you have a path, and if you have a path, something like this, right? this is a path, and then we have E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, what we can do is we can just take the function value f of z1, this is z1 times 1, and then we take f of z2. And this is done in such a way that we actually have, when we go around here, we just get, we get actually just 0. So what we have is d of dz. And uh, this is equivalent that we have just a uh, Gauchy Riemann differential equation u x is equal to v y and u y is equal to minus v x. And actually, that means that uh, essentially Green's theorem into discrete. This means that the and we have also the Morera theorem. <coughs> just this this condition that we have uh, for every closed path we have. We have zero. We get zero implies immediately that the Gauchy Riemann, the Gauchy Riemann differential equation, which is this. So uh, there are different ways how one can do that. Smirno, for example, assumes that f is a gradient field, and then of course you have also the, the condition, and that it's harmonic. So the whole thing could also be done CN, CN, so this is a discrete torus. It would not change if we just identify the boundary, uh, identify <coughs> opposite side. We get, we get discrete torus for n bigger or equal to 4, and we have no to a torus. Or if we leave away these diagonals here, this is actually triangulization of a of a, of a torus. This needs some explanation because what we have here is we have we divide by z minus a. What we one way to do that to define uh, rational functions is to take the exponential function and invert it. And if you look at the inverse, then you get the log. And then you can differentiate. When you get the log, the differential you get one over z. And then so 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 what you just want is you want the same calculus than in the in the continuum. So I will come back to this at another time, maybe uh, make a picture kucha. Again, 20 slides, 20 seconds, which... But the, another thing which is interesting is how, how to generalize this to other, other graphs. So that's what, for example, in, 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 in what appears in Smirnov and some statistical mechanics. So what you have to do is you have to kind of build a complex structure here. So you have to see what's the, the function value and you have the function value here, how do you assign the function value on the edges in such a way that uh, things work, the, the, the same theorems hold. And when you have it more for more general graphs like this, you can build Riemann surfaces and you don't have to constrain yourself to a situation like a torus, to flat situation. So this is also flat, uh, this is a flat situation here. And so here we can get to other uh, Riemann surfaces. <coughs> uh...